Hey friends, this is Laura and welcome back to Book Bubbler. Let's do a quick, hopefully, February book haul. Now last month I think I hauled nine books and I was hoping I could do that, like that number or less this month. I <laughs> have more than that. Um, but that's okay because a lot of them were free and that's always a good thing, right? I will take free books pretty much any day. Okay, so jumping right in, first up we have some romance. So these are all by Louise Allen. They are all, all Harlequins, Harlequins or Mills and Boone. Um, here they all are. These are all from Paperback Swap. So for me, these were all free. Um, I, I ordered four of them and the lady who mailed them to me kindly sent me the fifth one for free. So what do we have here? We have The Duke's Counterfeit Wife, A Proposal to Risk Their Friendship, the Notorious Mr. Hurst, which is part of her Scandalous Ravenhurst series. Um, a Model Debutante. And if I can pick this up, it's got a weird cover. Not quite a lady. It's like this weird material. Like you can see cross hatching on it. I don't know. Um, I really enjoy Louise Allen's writing. And I'm just trying to sort of slowly catch up with stuff when I can. And this lady had a bunch of them. So all of these more helpful um, were free. Um, also free were these two books from Danny. So she gave me a copy of Death of a Busybody by George Belairs. This is part of the British crime classics series that I am loosely collecting. I mean I was doing them in earnest when they were first being published but I've since sort of fallen off and I, I do enjoy them. The ones I've read I really have liked so Happy to have this one. And then she also gave me this vintage copy of Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, complete with very old book smell. <laughs> I don't think there's anything in the front here. There is not, but this is from 1967. So nice to have that. Rebecca is one of my favorite books. Let's do the other free book. So we get all the free ones out of the way. This is The Bedlam Stacks by Natasha Pulley. Um, my friend Michelle very kindly gave this to me after she finished reading it. Um, I have her first book, The Clockmaker on Villagree Street. I think that's it. Um, and this is supposed to be, I think, a loose follow-up. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know, but I, I'm looking forward to reading this. Her books sound really interesting to me. I like that kind of quirky... Victorian steampunky-ish kind of vibe that's out there. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but whatever. So I have this to get to whenever I get to it. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Danny. And thank you, Random Lady from Paperback Swap. Okay, so on to books that I have purchased. <laughs> so I was, I forget what I was doing, just kind of putzing online a couple of weeks ago and read about the Infanta Eulalia of Spain. And what an interesting very modern life that she had. So from what I read, Wikipedia, um, this sounds like a, a pretty accurate historical fiction account of her life. So this is The Living Infinite by Chantal Acevedo. Um, so she lived in the late 1800s through I think the mid 1900s. She ended up at the, is it 1893? Yes. Um, spent her youth in exile, had a loveless marriage, she accepts the role of royal emissary far from Europe. Um, she travels by ship to the New World, first to Cuba, and then to the U.S. and the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. There she's a representative of the Bourbon dynasty and a guest. Unbeknownst to all but her travel companion, her plan is to find a publisher for her scandalous incendiary memoir, a secret manuscript that if published might well turn the old world order on its head. So that's what this is about. I'm excited to read about this. She did publish two or three books about court life and about her life in general that were pretty scandalous at the time. I think, if I remember correctly, the book that she that they're talking about here that she was sort of pushing when she was in Chicago um, for the World's Fair, her brother, who was the prince, said that she's not allowed to publish it until he reads it first and approves it. And she said, no, I don't think so. And she published it anyways. Like, what a badass, right? So looking forward to getting to this at some point hopefully sooner than later. Then I believe this is the 32nd in the Hamish Macbeth series, Death of a Green-Eyed Monster. This is a brand new book. Um, MC Beaton passed away, I think two years ago in 20, 2020, I think. Um, so R.W. Green is taking on, I think not only this series that she writes, but also her Agatha Raisin series, because there are new titles coming out for that too. So 
looking forward to getting this one too. And I'm very glad that there will be an extension of this series that I really enjoy reading very much. Okay, I resorted my romance novels in my bedroom on like my romance shelves. And I realized I was missing two in the, of two of my favorite romance authors. So I'm missing the last, what I think is the last one in the Wilds um, series by Eloisa James. This is a wild child. I think it's the sixth or seventh one, The Wilds of Lindo Castle. There we go. I haven't started the series yet. I know I'll get to it, but at least I have this last book and it's then I know it's finished and I own them all. And then this came out last year, earlier this year, I forget which. It's the start to a new series by Sarah McLean, Bombshell, part of her Hell's Bells series. Also, this is a mass market. Do you see? So recently, like last year sometime, I had a little mini rant about how they're changing this, the size of mass markets and they're making them the same size, but just taller, right? Annoying to try and like double stack or triple stack or whatever, but fine. Now, what is this? It's just like square. I <laughs> Irritating, but I have that book now. <laughs> And then the very last one I have is my Book of the Month Club for February. I think this is a fantasy. Not sure. This is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. So, briefly, it starts with a letter and an ominous journey across dark waters. Ten, year, ten years after being sent away to the mainland to become a bard, Jack Tamerlan is summoned home to Cadence, but his return is not a joyful one. Girls are missing from the island, and Adara, future leader of the clan, believes Jack is the only one who can find them. So it's like about magic and enchantments and people growing up and marrying each other and all these missing girls and all this stuff. So it's like a fantasy sort of mystery, it sounds like. Very, very interested in this one so we'll see all right i believe that is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen books that i hauled in february <laughs> oops um but that's okay right because half were free that's not bad and the other ones uh that i bought i well i'm sure i'll like them all but i've read three of the authors before and like them so, okay, now I need to go try and find a space <laughs> to put all these on the shelf. Oh my God. Um, yeah, the big book on haul project is stalled for now just because I can't move around that well on my foot and it takes time and I haven't had that lately. So yeah, but it's, I'm still working on it, right? So <laughs> Lord knows I need to do it. Um, all right, I hope you guys didn't haul too many in February or you just went hog wild and got all the books in that case. Please let me know. I want to see your hauls. <laughs> Live vicariously through you. And yeah, I already have one under my belt for this month. So we'll see. We'll see how March goes. All right, you guys take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.